invitation to you for our upcoming assembly. The assembly scheduled to take place on 10th July at Multipurpose Hall. It aims to shed light on the significant global issues discussed in the G20 forum. As you are well aware, the G20 is a vital international platform where leaders from the world's largest economies come together on crucial issues of global importance. We have planned to present the nuances of G20 in a manner that is both engaging and informative with a touch of fun. We extend our heartfelt gratitude for your valuable time and support and we eagerly look forward for your esteemed presence at the assembly. Thank you.
deliberate on critical global issues. It's a great privilege to have you all here today as a part of this informative and entertaining pursuit. And we aspire to equip you with a comprehensive understanding of the significance of G20 and its far-reaching impacts on the global arena. Before we commence this assembly, we request Gauri Ma'am and Rana Ma'am to light the lamp. Night over darkness and virtue over vice. Oh, 
audience. Please tell us what exactly is G20. The G20, Group of 20, is an international forum comprising of the world's largest advanced and emerging economies. Its members include 19 individual countries and one union of countries. It was established in 1999 to promote international economic cooperation and decision making and has since become a key platform for addressing global economic challenges and promoting sustainable growth. Indeed, that was a smart move. Dear audience, stay connected with us to watch this concise and engaging presentation detailing the timeline of the G20. The G20 was founded in 1999 after the Asian financial crisis. As a forum for the finance, ministers and central bank governors to discuss global economic and financial issues. The G20 was upgraded to the level of heads of state or government in the wake of global economic and financial crisis of 2007. 2009 was designated as the premier forum for international economic cooperation. The G20 summit is held annually under the leadership of a rotating presidency. The G20 initially focused largely on broad macroeconomical issues. Since then, it has expanded its agenda of interally, which include trade, sustainable development, health, agriculture, energy, anti-corruption and climate change. So cool! Ma'am, can you please tell us who does this G20 meet and who all are its members? In addition to the member countries, that is 19 countries, Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Canada, China, France, Germany, India, Indonesia, Italy, Japan, Republic of Korea, Mexico, Russia, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, Turkey, United Kingdom and the United States and the European Union. Each G20 presidency invites other guest countries and European equal partner in the G20 meetings and summits. You know, apart Bangladesh, Egypt, Mauritius, Netherlands, Nigeria, Oman, Singapore, Spain, and the United Arab Emirates, Bangladesh, Nigeria, Netherlands, Oman, Egypt, Mauritius, Singapore, Spain, and the United Arab Emirates are the guest participants for G20 2020 Summit, who get an equal opportunity to come and be an equal partner in the process. They have all come together under the umbrella of a beautiful thought, that is, Vasudev Kutumbakar which means one earth, one family, one future. I'm gonna make it. 
Specifically, Starstruck 9E would like to know what is meant by the term Sherpa track. Wait, wait, Akansha, I think I might help Sahasra here. Hey, everyone. Get ready to tune in to learn about, learn about the ins and outs of the G20 with this super cool presentation on a structure. रचना सरल रोटेटिव प्रेसिडेंसी होती है अमल प्रतिवर्ष मिलने का इरादा जरूरतमंदों की है मदद का वादा G20 के ट्रैक है दो मिलकर करते हैं ये काम ताकि विश्व में हो पहचान एक है शेरपा दूसरा फाइनेंस सब राष्ट्र चले मिलके साथ मिले कंधे से कंधा और हाथों से हाथ ये सब अपनी अपनी पहचान एग्रीकल्चर एंटी करप्शन डिजिटल इकोनॉमी डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट एजुकेशन एम्प्लॉयमेंट टूरिज्म हेल्थ क्लाइमेट ट्रेड 
चेपट रख रखे इन सब का ध्यान इसमें तरक्की समस्याओं का समाधान शेरपा का यह मान अभिमान इंटरनेशनल टैक्सेशन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर हेल्थ टास्क फोर्स फाइनेंस फाइनेंस ट्रैक बनाए रखे ऐसी नीति बेहतर बने दुनिया रहे सब में प्रेम प्रीति जी ट्वेंटी जी ट्वेंटी जी ट्वेंटी जी ट्वेंटी बीस देश है मंच पर आते अपना अपना पहलू सुनाते वाद होता है विवाद होता है समस्याओं का सुलझाव होता है अमेरिका से यूरोप तक एशिया से अफ्रीका तक सब आवाजें साथ लाया जी ट्वेंटी ने विश्व को शांति से उन्नति का पाठ पढ़ाया तो क्या जी ट्वेंटी को अपने जाना उसका सही रूप पहचाना धन्यवाद awesome narrative parliament mam it's a matter of huge pride that our country india is holding the presidency of the g20 from 1st december 2022 to 30th november 2023 will they change the leaders every year in sakaksha the g20 summit is held annually under the leadership of a rotating presidency this approach provides a fair chance to each representative to steer the forum towards the common goal would you like to know the one common goal which they all aspire for The one which is the need of the hour, ma'am. I have a guess. First, let's challenge our audience to use their intellect and discover what the whole world truly requires. Folks, our next presentation tells us that. Get ready to tune into the dance of peace and sustainability, and above all, respect for all. <laughs>
one that is full of challenges and difficulties. However, peace remains the key requirement for us to overcome these challenges and achieve progress. Only by working together can we create a world that is truly peaceful and just for all. Friends, there are a number of cities which are hosting the conferences of these world leaders over various issues. I am proud to say that Srinagar too has hosted the third tourism working group meeting. This is an earnest effort connect the Jammu and Kashmir to the mainstream. Ma'am, would you be able to shed some light on a situation where G20 leaders have effectively addressed the problem and then solved it? Hansen, I have a better idea. Why don't we attend a live session of the G20 meeting and witness the efforts first hand? Welcome to the Grand Assembly of the G20 India Summit where people from the world's most influential economists come together to engage in productive dialogues and find collective solutions to, pro to pressing global issues. Today, we unite to foster cooperation, address challenges and create a brighter future together. Today, we are going to witness the G20 meeting of Agriculture Chief Scientist Max Varanasi India from 17th April to 19th April 2023. About 80 delegates from G20, invited guest countries, international organizations have participated in the meeting. Dr. Himanshu Patak, Secretary DARE and Director General ICAR have chaired the meeting for three days. 17th to 19th April 2023. About 80 foreign delegates from G20 member states, that is Australia, Argentina, Brazil, Canada, China, France, Germany, Indonesia, Italy, Japan, Mexico, Republic of Korea, Russia, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, United Kingdom, and USA and European Union. Invited guest countries with Bangladesh, Egypt, Mauritius, Netherlands, Nigeria, Oman, Singapore, Spain, UAE and Vietnam. International organizations such as United Nations, International Monetary Fund, World Bank, World Health Organization, World Trade Organization, International Labour Organization, OEC, FSB, OECD, Chairs of Regional Organizations, AU, ORDA, NEPR, and same and special invites by India. International Solar Alliances, CDR and Asian Development Bank will be participating in the three-day meeting. Good morning, colleagues. Agriculture is the foundation of the civilization and culture of India. Indian agriculture is unique, diversified and vast providing livelihood and income to more than half of our population. During the last 75 years, the country has marched from ship to mouth to self-sufficient to a food exporting nation. It has achieved science and policy backed agri evolutions including green, white, blue, yellow, golden, brown, silver, gray and rainbow revolutions. Food production increased by 6 to 70 times since 1950 with only 1.3 times increase in the net cultivated area. The meeting of agricultural chief scientists, MACS, in G20 is instrumental in promoting joint action to put science-based solutions for achieving sustainable, resilient, and profitable agri-food systems. It provides a platform for discussions, deliberations, and exchange of knowledge, science, and technologies for food and nutrition security and strengthening cooperation among the G20 nations. In consonance with India's G20 presidency theme, One Earth, One Family, One Future, the meeting of Agricultural Chief Scientist, MACS, will pursue discussion on food and nutrition security, resilience to climate change, One Health, approaches digital agriculture, and public-private partnerships for research, education, and extension. The 12th MACS meeting under G20 presidency theme has identified the theme of sustainable agriculture and food systems for healthy people and planet. The meeting will feature the Maharishi Initiative, that is, millets and other ancient grains international research initiative. This international research initiative will focus on research and awareness with agrobiodiversity, food security, and nutrition, aligning with the International Year of Millets 2023. In these areas, options will be explored of G20 countries coming together to help, to sh help share science-based technological and innovative solutions. 
We have shared the agenda of today's meeting. Let us dedicate our on it. I couldn't agree more. Food security is a fundamental human right and requires a collective effort to ensure that everyone has access to safe, nutritious, and affordable food. We can establish a joint task force and can comprise experts from both our countries who specialize in agriculture, nutrition, and distribution systems. By pooling our knowledge and resources together, we can devise comprehensive strategies. That sounds like an excellent starting point representative. With a joint task force, we can leverage our respective expertise and learn from each other's experience. That would also provide a platform for us uh, for exchanging best practices and innovative solutions to tackle the root causes of the food insecurity. We highlight the importance of locally adapted crops for the transition towards resilient agriculture and food systems, enhancing agricultural diversity and improving food security and nutrition. Recognizing the achievements of the WE initiative, we intend to continue the R&D efforts to provide inclusive solutions to climate resilient, nutritious, locally adapted, indigenous, and underutilized grains. To strengthen the research collaboration and public awareness of these grain crops, we support the launch of the millets and other ancient grains in the national research initiative, Maharishi, with voluntary membership from G20 member countries, non-member countries, in national organizations, and the private sector. The objective and modalities of this initiative are placed in lecture one. Dear colleagues, I second this powerful solution to combat food shortages and foster sustainable food systems, promoting the production and consumption of local grains. In a world grappling with hunger, environmental challenges, and the need for resilient food systems, this approach holds immense promise. Local grains such as millets, sorghum, and quinoa have been the backbone of many traditional diets in many regions for centuries. These local grains possess remarkable nutritional profiles, often exceeding those of mainstream crops. They are rich in fiber, essential minerals, and vitamins, offering an wholesome alternative of highly processed and nutrient-poor food that contribute to the rising burden of non-communicable diseases. Aye, aye. Dear colleagues, we must also address the pressing issue that plagues nations torn by conflict, food scarcity resulting from war. In the midst of turmoil and violence, innocent lives are threatened, not only by bullets and bombs, but also by the cruel grip of hunger. Therefore, it's our collective responsibility to shed light on this dire situation and seek solutions to alleviate the suffering of those affected. What disrupts the entire food supply chain? Dismantling agricultural infrastructure, displacing farmers, and destabilizing markets. Fields that once bloom with crops become battlefields, rendering them barren and inhospitable. Essential resources such as water, seeds, and fertilizers become scarce, exacerbating the struggle to produce enough food to feed the population. Addressing food scarcity caused by war demands urgent action on multiple fronts. We must prioritize peace building efforts and advocate for diplomatic solutions to conflicts. Dear colleagues, I would like to remind you all that G20 is not the forum to discuss the international security. Let us all not discuss from the scheduled agenda. Under the Indian presidency, under the Indian presidency, the G20 Agricultural Summit 2023 was a success. The theme of G20 was well followed, and we celebrated the spirit of togetherness and harmony amongst us to ensure a bright future. The delegates were now taken up for a tour to different places to showcase the culture and diversity of India. At last, there were visits for exhibition of leading institutions like the Indian Council of Agricultural Research (ICAR) and State Agricultural Department at TFC. We, as Indians, are proud to host the G20 summit under the presidency of Lord Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Modi. Thank you. From this session, that certain issues are definitive, while others lack a conclusive resolution. But that is bound to happen, as each one of them has a different perspective. However, one must always keep on working towards the common goal and try to solve differences or issues mutually. Remember, collaboration and cooperation are the buzzwords to achieve mutual goals. Too good. I feel much more knowledgeable after watching that presentation. It was heartening to see that despite the differences, countries are establishing connections and creating platforms to focus towards one common goal, which is making the world a better place. Making this 
time and for contributing to today's show. Thank you. Dear audience, we hope that we have effectively conveyed the information about G20 to you through this telecast and that you have gained a better understanding of what G20 is all about. Wait, 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 friends, the picture is still there. We have one final showstopper before we leave. A dance on the fascinating meaning behind the G20 logo. Juxtaposes planet Earth with the lotus, India's national flower, which reflects growth amid challenges. The Earth reflects India's pro-planet approach to life, one in perfect harmony with nature. Below the G20 logo is Bharat, written in the Devanagari script. The theme of India's G20 presidency, Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam, or One Earth, One Family, One Future is drawn from the ancient Sanskrit text of the Maha Upanishad. Essentially, the theme affirms the value of all life, human, animal, plant and microorganisms, and their interconnectedness on the planet Earth and the wider universe. The theme also spotlights LIFE, Lifestyle for Environment, with its associated environmentally sustainable and responsible choices, both at the level of individual lifestyles as well as national development, leading to globally transformative actions, resulting in a cleaner, greener and bluer future. The logo and the theme together convey a powerful message of India's G20 presidency, which is of striving for just and equitable growth in all the world. As we navigate through these turbulent times, in a sustainable, holistic, responsible and inclusive manner. They represent a uniquely Indian approach to our G20 presidency of living in harmony with the surrounding ecosystem. For India, the G20 presidency also marks the beginning of Amrit Kal, the 25-year period beginning from the 75th anniversary of its independence on 15th August 2022, leading up to the sanitary of its independence towards a futuristic, prosperous, inclusive and developed society, distinguished by a human-centric approach at its core. and aided in enhancing your understanding of the topic. Dear audience, with this I Hansen and Akansha who would like to take your leave. We will be telecasting a very new session soon.
please don't like share please don't forget to like share and subscribe <laughs> to dip the campus chronicles on dips to you signing off have a great day bye guys delivered on the promises we made from the start. Throughout our work, we endeavored to present a broad subject matter while incorporating as much entertainment value as we could. The process of learning is truly enriched when learners take time to pause and reflect on their experiences. With this in mind, we intend to distribute a questionnaire that focuses on gathering feedback and insights about today's presentation. Additionally, we kindly ask you to share your thoughts and reflections about today's presentation which will be processed upon for further analysis and improvement. We now request Gauri ma'am and Raina ma'am to fill out the exit cards. Our representative will collect the same from you later. I now request Gauri ma'am to share her valuable feedback with us about today's presentation. Uh, all of you, you know, know, when you go to temples, okay, when we go to temple, your mummy and everybody wears those patu chira and then they bring out their beautiful jewels. Have you seen that? But do you wonder why we used to do this? It was because I'm sure God did not say that if you come with Patu Chira, I'll give you more blessings. If you come in the finest uh, kurtas or bri finery and all that, you'll get the best uh, blessings from us. Why do you think in ancient times, temples were uh, the place where people dress so well? Tell me, can anybody think of it? Okay, we have some elements like this and they disturb the whole procedures and processes that we have at school and classrooms. Having said that, all this was because temple was the center for meeting. All kinds of dealings used to happen in the temple because it was the only place where common gatherings happened. There was economic growth because of that. There was business relationships. Even weddings were finalized. A lot of dealings happened. Very similar to that is the G20. You know, G20, India's, uh, now I'm telling you, the greatest thing that now Modi ji has done, which Putin also said in his assembly was the Make in India uh, movement. And because of this Make in India movement, there is a lot of sense of pride. And another very important movement is Digital India. Most of the children, people who come from US to India, they have a huge issue in transacting is because the whole country has gone digital. They say we have a big issue if we don't have a G pay or a phone pay. Whereas our uh, vendors, even the roadside vendors have a QR code and they do g -pay. No nation is doing it as much as we do. So a big round of applause for our country that has gone so digital. We have to have this moment, we have this moment in digital India. Even the fellow who comes with the cow, you know, to uh, for that poor, uh, season when they come, even he, the cow has a QR code on its own. You can get pay there. Can you believe even uh, donating arms can be done through uh, digital media? That is only in India. Let me tell you, the transactions are terrible abroad. And for example, if you go for a visa renewal, I went for visa renewal, I entered, my driver was searching for a car park, by the time he fixed his car, I was already out. Within 15 minutes, visa renewal happened. Kudos to Digital India. Now, Make in India is an initiative. Why do you think we need it so importantly? People are now coming to invest. Why do we, we G20 presidency is so important for us? Because these people come, like I tell you in the temples, deals are made. People are coming to India. A lot of investments are happening. Apple has already opened up. Isn't it? So no more long, it's going to be a foreign thing. It's going to be very Indian in nature. So the kind of investments that are happening. And let me tell you once again, if you go to any of those countries that has racism, there is a lot of hatred towards say black and white. But for browns, the, the Asians, when it comes to Indian and China, they don't mess much. Because we have these soft power, we have this power more than them. So this is something that we are, so they don't look at Asians, especially us and China, they don't meddle much because we hold, we have common sense, we run the, you know, IT industry and we are good at what we are. So that is the biggest thing that we have to develop a sense of pride for ourselves. This is something which I am seeing 
as an education is a major shift now and that is what we should be doing at school and that is what this assembly does for us is to develop a sense of pride for our own country. Just now, Modi ji went to US. Immediately Putin is now calling him and talking. Can you understand? And they are two opposite powers. And we are in the center having best of both the worlds. We are the third largest country of, for producing renewable resources. Can you believe a dev so-called developing country? So one of the major thing that which really interests me is this energy, renewable energy. We are going to lead the renewable movement, renewable sources movement. Because one is we are blessed with solar energy, which is all free. Our school is a fine example of using, you know that? That most of the, at least 98% of our electricity, what we do is we have a sonal, solar panel. We send the, uh, all the electric energy that has been released or electricity that is being generated. We add it to the line and it goes to the electricity board. They count the units and that much of units of consumption is given free to us. Okay, we sell electricity and that is, so many things here are through solar, indirectly. Not directly, but indirectly we are getting it. So that is the biggest thing of using, initial investments are high. Okay, so these are the things, so the biggest uh, one is sustainable energy is one of the biggest agenda. And during COVID, we made a mark in the world. Our extensive research teams, Coven and all those that we discovered, Covaxin and all, was a big mark in the world history, children. That a country like ours went about giving. And apart from that, see what I'm telling you is, I can just put it in your class dynamics also. Char bache padre, they are doing something. They are too involved in all this rubbish. That's exactly what has happened. Post independence, India was also guarding its thing, but it minded its business and was very focused. But look at a country just next to us, Pakistan, funding terrorism. Now you know they are begging IMF to give them money. They are almost bankrupt. So they are, uh, they are blacklisted. Yeah. That uh, imagine when, whereas on the other side, Bangladesh is now becoming, its hosiery has become one of the world's best. If you go even to US, it says made in Bangladesh. Somehow they have used the uh, Singapore model for development. So, class useless they will stay where they are. So you choose, make your choices. So please take these lovely lessons from your own surroundings and you know, it's an inspiration now to be in India. It's wonderful leadership and I as an educationist will also say NEP has been the greatest thrust towards education. Tomorrow, by the time you all reach college, you are going to have a plethora. If you are going to join engineering, you can also do music as one of your subjects. That is going to be, that's going to come to you. I feel we have never been given the right choices. You will have that choices. So once again, have a sense of pride in India. And having said that, extremely beautiful assembly right from the moment I walked in. So many languages to hear to. And then, I'm so happy the children are participating in the programs like this. The band is getting stronger and stronger. I'm getting more children on board. Then comes the, of course, the presentations. Parumita ma'am, pseudo Parumita ma'am here. And children, if you really listen to this whole summit now, the whole thing you will understand because we are lazy. We don't like reading. If you really understand, if you listen to this whole debate and talk, you would have realized what are the areas we are pushing for. Anybody can tell one big area that India, uh, something that they were pushing for when it comes to nutrition. Uh, millets, millets is such a big thing now. And as per our topography and for this, for countries like say, Africa and all millets will play a vital role because that is what the geographical locations. Why is Telangana so rich in millets? It's because we are a drier country. Whereas Andhra is more on rice because they have a lot of water resources. You have to connect all your classroom learning to this. Why is something happening? What is France requiring? What is each country requiring? Can you imagine what France? Just one fellow got shot and what is happening in France? You realize that? One side, France is being, it's burning. On the other side, they are having 
uh, fashion week going on. So everything is happening around the world. You need to need, understand that life is all about opposites. Okay? And see, the same thing is when we have more, the merrier. Now I'm so happy when I see the dance performances. We have two sets of teachers with two different ideas on the whole G20. That is the beauty of diversity. We had two pair dancers. Each had, you know, I had goosebumps when each of the program happened because each brought out a very beautiful message. One brought out peace and one brought out the logo and a sense of pride. The second dance brought out the sense of pride in our own country. And the flag was unfurled, you feel a sense of pride. And in the first one, the most essential need of the hour is peace. And what is the point in having a war? Putin, I don't know what kind of, uh, you know, intent he has in shaking a country like Ukraine. But one man, that one pre president, I, mean, I forget his name, I'm very bad at names. He wears the most informal, can anybody remember the president's Ukraine's name? Yes. So, okay, yes. Have you seen his dress? First thing is, it's the coolest informal dress I really like about him. And he has stood his ground. Anybody could have given up. But he stood his ground for his country and a nation like Russia, you know, beating it down, but still it's standing its ground firmly. That is the spirit of leading a leader. Nothing can stop you from being a leader. Many of you, and there's lots to learn. Why do you think you have a history or a geography class? Is for this, for you to learn, for you to imbibe values, even from a geography lesson, you have a lesson, something to learn from it. But the problem is, we don't wish to learn. We don't have our eyes and ears open. Just marks milne se hi mujhe kaafi hai. That is the biggest tragedy of our learning processes, our mindsets. So please, bloom, flourish, learn beyond the borders. Connect, and teachers appeal again, connect to your classrooms this way. So every moment was a learning for me, or I learned a lot of things. Even before I was checking out what an all G20 could mean to us. So there's going to be a lot of development. There's going to be one of the biggest thing is the cities. Development of cities has become one of the biggest thing. I think in uh, on, uh, Telangana, I think you know how many of you know, a cycling track is going to be, they're going to start a cycling track. So that is one of the most beautiful things that European nations have, which we don't have. Slowly these, and uh, Hyderabad has gone crazy with flyovers. We are facing the problems now, but slowly, eventually, this will become one of the greatest sustainable models for cities. Because Bangalore has failed miserably in this part. So I think we are learning from mistakes. So be proud to be an Indian, and I am extremely proud that you will all be leading in some place or the other in some good way. So, and uh, other than that, of course, the Nukkad Natak has an impact that nothing better than that can impact. And of course, the song I think was composed by Pooja Ma'am, written by Pooja Ma'am. Okay, written by Mohit sir and composed by the team, music team. So they wrote it themselves. So I'm so proud of my band of teachers who are doing stuff on their own. Can you imagine how they visualize this dance? Can you imagine how many wee hours into the night I think the, both the dance teachers would have just, you know, mentally designed this dance. So that many hours they have put in thought. So a big round of applause to your band of teachers. <laughs> this script came to me, I don't know, months back. May itself, the script was done by the coordinators, everything. Pooja Ma'am had already sent it to me. So imagine how many months of thought, intellectual process happens, research happens, then the script comes. And all you need to do is listen and appreciate and imbibe. That is what is expected out of you. I'm ready made up there, yes, Okay, kudos to each and every member of the uh, grade 9 and 11, right? And so, super. So, that we look at them making a lot of noise out there. Shh. Ah, yeah, you can tap this fellow from this side. And also, my appreciation to the ones who made these wonderful t shirts during the interhouse competitions. And this is how we lace it, we spin, weave it together. We have the, with so much of thought, we plan every single activity. And it is your bounden duty to respect each and every activity that is happening at school. And do it with a sense of pride. Thank you. Kudos to you all. 
and I love the Swayam Sevak. Every single soul, thank you for making this day. Thank you, ma'am. I now request Kaushik to render the vote of thanks. Gratitude is a powerful emotion that allows us to acknowledge and appreciate the value of the efforts and contributions of those around us. It serves as a reminder of the appreciation of their works. In a world where recognition often goes unexpressed, it is essential that we take a moment to express our heartfelt gratitude. With this in mind, on behalf of the students of grade 9 and 11, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to our principal ma'am, Ms. Gauri Sakar, for her unwavering support and guidance. Ma'am, your visionary leadership and commitment towards our education have provided us with the best opportunities to grow and excel. I would also like to thank our headmistress, Ms. Raina ma'am, for her encouraging presence. It gives me great joy to thank our coordinators, Garyo ma'am and Pooja ma'am, for giving their guidance and support which is required in all our endeavors. I would also like to thank our administrative team, headed by Mr. Hanumantra sir, for the perfect logistic support. I would also like to thank our head boy, Moses John, for lending his voiceover for our classical dance. To our teachers, the guiding lights of our educational path, it is essential that we give them a heartfelt gratitude. With this event would not have been possible without you. Thank you, dear Didis and Bayas. Thank you, Balakrishna Bayar and Ramesh Bayar for your silent and diligent support. I'd also like to extend my special gratitude to the team of our enthusiastic and supportive art, dance and music teachers who have helped this assembly be a joyful one. With this, uh, I would now I'd like to include by thanking the audience for your unwavering support and patience. May we continue to cultivate a culture of gratitude and excellence together.